turn to John chapter 14 and begin right at the at the start of Jesus's farewell discourse. Lord, we pray that as we look at your word, that you may open it to our hearts and our hearts to your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. There's this interesting moment about unity, unity in Christ. It's part of our legacy. As Jesus begins his farewell discourse with the sentence that is normally translated, let not your hearts be troubled. The word for hearts is singular, heart. So Jesus is saying to his disciples, let not your, plural, heart, singular, be troubled. He's highlighting the idea of their possessing one singular heart as a collective group of people. Is that interesting? Isn't it curious? So let's just reflect on that for for a moment we know the context jesus is offering reassurance before the awful events of the next 24 hours unfold and also the transition of the disciples losing a jesus who is experienced in the flesh face to face and gaining a jesus experienced through the spirit So is he simply saying you are all similarly touched by the same anxiety, the same emotion of anxiety and loss? So just as we might say we're all of one mind, is he saying you are all of one heart? Well, yes, for sure. But there's more than that, isn't there? Scholars of this gospel have often posited that the community in which the Gospel of John grew up was a community that had been separated from the synagogue. You think of the first Christians all being Jewish and then there being a separation between the mother religion and this new thing that they sort of separated or they were kicked out of the synagogue. And we can see both of those kind of instances in uh, within, within the the New Testament and and in the Gospel of John. Now, if that was so, then there was a sense of mutual dislocation, this is the argument. And Jesus is countering this by comforting the community with reminder that they're all in this together, their collectivity of heart. Let not your heart be troubled. And then Philip brings a practical question in lord lord we don't know the way to the father we don't know we we want a road map and jesus replies he is that map he is the way the truth and the life so as we ponder this collectivity of heart we're all in this together verse six the way the truth and the life becomes not a paradigm of christian exclusivity but is in fact a declaration of inclusivity remember when paul said all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of god that was an inclusivity of failure but this is our legacy the inclusivity of humanity in christ all find their way in him in him i am the way the truth and the life so philip asked Jesus, how they will know the way, and that that term hodos is the common word for street or lane or road. And while the term can be understood physically, it can also mean journey or trip, or it can be understood metaphorically as a way of life. And that's how it's understood in the Acts of the Apostles in Acts chapter 9, verse 2, the people of the way. And there were other uh, philosophers like Plato and Aristotle who used that term hodos as a way way of understanding how to follow their teaching. So it sort of got that linguistic context. So Philip's asking a question in a literal way. (laughs) And Jesus is answering in a metaphorical way of life journey. 
So he expands the idea with these two new words, truth and life, Aletheia and Zoe, truth and life. Jesus was walking in such a way that was leading him to death. And he's invited them to follow. So the metaphorical, the journey that they're going on leads to death and through that into resurrection. But in Little Scots, Greek lexicon, one of the older lexicons, there's an interesting side note that says that that word truth, aletheia, can be understood as a true event or, listen to this, the realization of dream. The realization of dream. It's like what you are anticipating, what you are seeing. It reminds me of Maya Angelou's poem, Shall I, Still I Rise?, uh, and the, the line, I am the dream and hope of the slave coming out of one terrible condition, which, you know, in, in John 14 is of anxiety and loss and fear. A slavery of our present human condition, but having a dream of liberation, of exodus, the way out, ex hodos into new life it's powerful isn't it isn't that interesting is it possible that jesus as the truth of god represents the dream and hope of god not not our but but god jesus is our example of what it looks like to walk on the way i love that i love thinking about jesus as god's heart for humanity god's dream and hope for us. Wow. It seems to me that, that this is what eternal life truly is, that it's not out there beyond the blue. It's right here in the nitty gritty of life lived now, of death experienced now, and through that too resurrection of anxiety experienced now and through that into peace my peace not as the world gives give i to you my life not life in these terms but new life eternal life life in the kingdom of god it all fits and, and well, how do we get there lord how do we arrive well i am the way i am the true living way i am the dream and hope of god this is how you do it. And you do it together. So the Jahannine community was a disconnected community that sought connection through difficult times, if you want to put it in a simplistic way. But perhaps that's the message for us, for singular hearted people, to be people of the way, to be the dream and hope of God, to participate in abundant life now how radical how wonderful to think of it those ways we participate in abundant life while here on the earth together together we're all in this together in our anxiety in our inadequacy in our loss but also as dream and hope as the dream and hope of god and further Jesus talks about going back to the Father, and he states in verse 12, the one who believes in me will also do the works I do, and in fact will do greater works than these. Have you ever leaned back to contemplate what that means? Our greater works must exhibit the way and the truth and the life that is Jesus for communities with a single heart that continue to be disconnected, continue to be denied access to all the areas that can bring real life, good life, abundant life. That's the way, the truth and the life for a collective people with a singular heart. We are the people of God. We are the people brought alive through Christ. And we are brought alive together to wash feet, to live in peace, 
to create community, to enjoy the presence of God. Not just to promote worthy ideas, but to be the idea, the dream and hope of God in a lost and failing world. This is our legacy. This is the unity of all in Christ, the Christ way. Amen. Lord, put your word into our hearts, even in my stumbling speech now, that we may hear what you're saying to us and so live together. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you today.